and I've been living here in Swindon for 10 years. I didn't know it existed. How did you find out about it? My friend told me there is an event going on today. And we thought, oh, we just pop over. We couldn't find it first, but now we're so happy we did find it in the end. So yeah, lovely, lovely. It's a lovely day for it. And how are your children finding it? Oh, my little one loves it. It feels very safe. It feels very, like, very welcoming environment, isn't it? So it feels like you're visiting an aunt in the, uh, you know, in the countryside, more or less. And we did enjoy going into the museum and the ladies dancing and, you know, explaining what the museum is about. That was quite an experience. Yeah, enjoyed it very much. This is the house he sprang from. Imagine him now. Start imagining. Okay, and that kind of leads me into the question of what do you think if Richard Jeffries walked into his old house today, what do you think he would say? <laughs> well, when I first came here in 2006, uh, it felt a very cold, interesting place, like a place I thought, gosh, this has got loads of potential. This is a wonderful place. And reading his stories, I started to read his books. Um, I felt, oh my goodness, so much is possible here within these words of Jeffreys. Um, a place of grass and leaf humming like a hive of voices, you know, he really loved that, that dialoguing and having, chatting and, you know, creating. It's freedom, we have a freedom here that I think relates to Richard Jeffreys' writing and his love of nature and his love of society and belief in people. It relates to the space itself. It's a little green oasis right in the middle of uh, a big urban spread. Um, it relates to the way people are when they come here. They can run around, uh, they can enjoy themselves. And that's not just the children, that's everybody. That's parents, <laughs> teachers, uh, you, you know. Us. It's, uh, us, yeah. Um. Well, I, I, I asked and said, am I too old to be doing this? <laughs> <laughs> and the answer they said, no, was? They said, they, no, that's all right, they said carry on. Well, my name's Susie and I'm a volunteer at the Richard Jeffries. And this is my daughter Hayley who's come to visit me for a few days and has got roped in to volunteering at Richard Jeffries. Well, personally, I think I love the atmosphere here. Just being here is a beautiful place, it's very calm. It's very inspiring for creativity. I love the fact that we've got writers and poets and artists come and use the space. And um, the general public, we've got the, the railway, little miniature railway, and people are coming in on the railway and then coming here and finding out a bit of Richard Jeffries and all oh, about writing, all oh, about poetry, and it's all just, it's just so inspiring. I love it. One of, one of the problems we have is our physical location because we're on a dual carriageway and over the decades the place has slowly sort of dropped out of recognition in the town. There used to be a Richard Jeffries playground, there used to be a Richard Jeffries school, everybody in Swindon used to know about Richard Jeffries, but that's faded, so it's one hell of a mission to get that name back on everybody's lips. We're always trying to sort of keep to the ethos, if you like, the spirit of what Jeffries loved. And of course we do that instantly without us actually doing anything because they're walking into the house that he lived in and they're seeing the gardens that he grew up in and took water just the same as it ever was. Um, well, I think like some of the children that are here today um, are autistic and they really um, struggle with the concept of like metaphors and um, but I think in this sort of safe environment you know, it helps them to um, I suppose explore those concepts and um, yeah, it's about like rehearsing skills and learning things, so yeah, it just sort of fills a safe environment. Qualities are another thing, that's how we write metaphor. So if you think of a gun and you think of peace, let's think how a gun might represent peace. Fire, okay. Fire, what could it fire that would be more peaceful? Love. Oh, nice. nice. I like that. That is good. I think you're a poet in the making. <laughs> you are. So what makes poems astonishing is when they are surprising. So when metaphor is always surprising because you've got some, you, you, we present one thing but we're actually saying another. When children uh, first arrive here, especially when we get sort of um, school groups, they come with a sort of, I think, 
probably a little bit of a, a gloomy anticipation. Oh God, we're going to be taken around a museum. We just try to make everything we do in the museum absolutely genuine. And in doing that, it is incredible how people tell other people. But, you know, we had an event yesterday where there were seven artists here uh, helping uh, countless uh, children to enjoy the arts in the museum. Uh, but it is that thing of, you know, say, a museum. It instantly conjures up. No etching, no sketching, no marking, no marking, no fluffing, no fluffing, no fluffing, no puffing. Stop speaking, no bleating, no more of your cheek. No boundaries, no limits, take off. I think museums need to change. I think they're an old idea uh, and that I know a lot of museums wouldn't like to think that. They sort of think, yeah, but we're very important. No, the information that museums hold is important. How you get it across has changed. So, Mike, what is your plan with all these lovely budding writers today? Uh, well, what we're, what we're going to do is take them round the house and the gardens. So it's, it's not so much about it being a museum and saying, look, there's a book and there's a something else. It's about uh, giving them a bit of a taste of what the house is about, what the different rooms were for, what Jeffries would have done back then, but then intermingling that with some of his stories, especially out in the gardens, you know, wood magic and uh, all the animals in that, uh, and Bevis, of course. <laughs> uh, but also just uh, getting them to sort of uh, look for themselves, I suppose, especially outdoors, looking at the nature, seeing what there is. So Hilda came to um, our college and, and gave this really excellent uh, talk on poetry to try and draw our students into uh, into poetry to get them interested in it. Oh well, we, there's a lot to learn from uh, from the past and from writers from the past. So someone like Richard Jeffries, you can read his work and you can actually have a look at how he structures it and what he talks about and the subjects he covers. And of course, once you start thinking about the stuff that they wrote, you can you can then kind of spark off of that and, and come up with your own ideas and build off of it in that way. So Richard Jeffries is sadly somebody I didn't know anything about, but I've learned a lot about today. I'm fascinating and it's like right on your doorstep and it's a bit embarrassing that you don't actually know about that stuff. And now I feel bad because I should have been a creative writer teaching my mommy should have known about that stuff. So there you go. But now I do. So I'm a fan now. To be honest, no, I didn't even know he even existed. So coming to this place, it was it was really interesting actually looking at all this uh, I've been to Coke Water when I was like four. I didn't know all of this existed only knew the water myth. It's been good, it's been seeing some stuff that I haven't seen before at Coke. It's, yeah, it's good. Good like information on the museum that I didn't really know about before, so yeah, really good. And what do you think maybe about the writer himself now? I've never seems, heard of him. Yeah, seems very creative, as I only just heard of him today, and he's not crazy, but he's created a lot from, I guess not a little, but... No, but no, nothing like special. He's yeah. created so another thing. It's kind of like very otherworldly for something that seems so kind of mundane in yeah. like day to day life. So, do you think that's inspired your own writing? Yeah, definitely. So. I think definitely to write about a place that we know in yeah. a different one. That's something I've never thought about before. It's about living what's inside those books. It's living with that nature, with mm. the passion of a writer, with an artist. Uh, and that's what we try and do, and, that, and, and the fact that we can do it in the very same space that he did, uh, it, that seems to have a real effect on people too, doesn't it? You can make that connection over, over 150 years. Yeah. Uh, but this little clock here gives you some idea of Jeffries and what he wrote. He, you can see it's it, nature, but what really made Jeffries special and different, this is all the stuff he wrote, was that what he was really interested in was us. And nature. He, wasn't, he just didn't go around telling you about the names of the flowers. He talked about human beings and their place in nature. Uh, so he was quite a complicated character, really. He also had one of these. Does anybody know what this is? Yeah, it's one of those. Yeah, it's one of those. But does anybody know what this is? It's a boat. It looks like a boat, doesn't it? Isn't that for like, light fires? No. Insects. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> it's, a, it's a mobile phone. No. Go on. Any other guesses? Uh, shh. <laughs> Don't I? All right, I'll give you another clue. What's this? The same, same as that. that. Oh, you're a right. Blue. They're, they're a pair. Nice. <laughs> it looks sharp. Yeah. Ice skates. Yay, well done. And basically, you screwed that into the heel of your shoe 
put a leather strap through there and tied that around the front. Now, why would Richard Jefferies have had ice skates? Because the link centre hadn't been built then. The 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 lake the lake, the lake froze over, and people used to go and skate on the lake. Would you like that? Um, just having a few things in a case doesn't doesn't do it. You've got to take the stuff out of that case and just give it to people, let them know it. And, mm. and before you know it, they're telling other people, wow, you want to go and see mm. what's happening over there. Poetry Swindon Festival. Um, the amount of work that they put in behind the scenes is amazing. Because uh, they, they're constantly here, there and everywhere from the crack of dawn until, you know, the middle of the night. Yeah. Um, but they, they've sort of created this really wonderful space that holds all sorts of possibilities and when there's an empty gap in there that sort of looks like it needs something they, they fill it with, mm. with something that inspires and is is creative and interesting mm. and that really weaves together the the ecology and the importance of the nature that's in the space mm. to our local environment yes, and the whole in history, the creative thing and the, the history, whole history of, of this place yeah. it's really exciting it's really we, get, we get very excited about it yeah. yeah it's just the history of it and and how important it is to swindon i think we'd love it to feel like a space where people feel at home and that the arts are very much at the heart of that and nature and being outdoors and to reach reach people that that don't have that experience at home that perhaps don't have a garden or aren't used to interacting with the arts because it feels alien to them so going to an art centre or a theatre we want to bring those experiences into a very home and into a home environment a lot of his writing uh, is sort of looking back on nature after he'd moved away from here. You know, he looks back at this place and the nature around it, and he's very passionate about it. And stories like Bevis, uh, that you know, that's that's written about people having an adventure in nature here, and we can we can take people around that. So why would he object to that? I don't think he would. I think he would absolutely love mm. it. I think he would go, wow, 150 years after I'm dead, people are, are reenacting Bevis yeah. uh, <laughs> almost without knowing it. We get them all to sit under the council tree and pose uh, as they did in the book. I think, I think he'd join in. I think he'd I think go, he would too. yeah. I think, well, let's yeah. go and find some yeah. bugs under a stone. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd tell us what they were. If you haven't read his stories yet, I recommend you come here and actually learn about this place because it's very old. It's like an artifact all around. Just the way that, that nature grows is because is very like creative and and very natural around here. So you can just relax here. You can come here to relax, or you can just come here for fun. But would you recommend this to other people to come out with their children? Yeah. <laughs> it's lots of fun, why not? I love being here. It's um, relaxing. It feels like we're doing something really worthwhile. Um, the biggest thing for me is just the social, the social side. Um, and just being out in nature and not confined to tables and chairs. And, because we're home educated, so um, we need to make sure we're doing lots of things and around lots of other people with them. And uh, would you spread the word or recommend this? Oh, I will. Oh, absolutely. And I'm, I'm actually thinking of doing some courses here myself. It's such a lovely building, it's really nice. And we built a fire over there and we've all had a really nice time. Would you come back? You uh, definitely, definitely, absolutely. I would, I would. It's brilliant, everybody should come. Yeah. <laughs> it's really a force for inspiration. A force for good. And good and, and saving the world. Saving the world. It's going to save the world. Yes, yes. absolutely. <laughs>